İnşallah Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Atiyullah, Atiyah Rasulü ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajisu da'ifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. Alhamdulillah for the, the holy month of Qamar and the holy Surat al-Qamar, Allah inshaAllah bring from the realities of guidance and the reality of those who follow the oceans of guidance. And our life is to follow the Divinely Light and that which is eternal. And Allah shows the signs within themselves and upon the horizon. And the sign within oneself is harder to achieve because then they have to be true in their reflection and consistent. The signs upon the horizon may be more obvious that people can look to the outside and see the sign on how the moon follows the sun and as a result of its obedience in its path of following and taking its difficulties and its tests. As a result it reaches a state of purification and the result of that purification is light. So with the purity of the moon and what it represents and the station that it represents of Maqam al-Fardani is then as the spiritual poles are teaching that they follow the light and the eternal light. And it's a life filled with testing and imtihan, testing from Allah's Divinely Presence. The path of difficulty and testing but the istiqam and the firmness upon the path and stay the course in which to follow the light. And as a result when Allah begins to purify insan then they wish to inherit from the reality of the qamar, wish to inherit the reality of reflecting the Muhammadan light. But that light that is being reflected and the path being presented is not an easy path. And that's the difficulty that people whom they're filled with bad character, bad desires, as they wish to approach the light, it's not as simple as they just, okay. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm going to go, I'm going to approach, I'm going to take that path. The reality is that the difficulty and the bad character within people not allowing them to move and gain access nearer to that light. That with everything we describe when people come new they're like a wet log and when heat is touching something wet it doesn't realize anything, it doesn't feel the heat, it doesn't feel that light and as a result there's a euphoric stage at the beginning in which they feel everything is fantastic, this is so great, all these emanations and the euphoric and ecstatic feeling of emanations. And as one progresses the wetness of that log begins to dry and as they dry they feel more of the heat and as they dry they feel more of the heat and as a result everything inside will begin to come out.
So we describe that we have a, a dish called kalipache in which they take the lamb's head as an entire meal and they make a soup and they put this into the pot. But unfortunately as soon as you put it into the pot and begin to boil the water, what happens? Means that everything now with the heat and the hot water everything comes out. So whatever type of dirtiness was in that begins to come out with the bubbling of water, with the heat and the application of heat. And with everything that comes out Allah will take that foam of dirtiness and take it off. So means the hikmah of a Divine heat is to relieve oneself of impurities. So if the gold and you want to take a path of gold, mean Allah has to burn the copper out, has to burn the iron and charcoal out, burn out all the elements that make the gold to remain impure. That heat process is what we think of imtihan and testings in life. Means every type of situation that's coming to us upon our path, the moon is giving to us that this is not something easy. That as testing comes in one's life, the natural inclination is that a test comes and many will run because they say, it's just not for me and difficulties in different directions and they lose their course and they lose their path. They begin to flee from that direction and that's why then in the spiritual path the hold tight to the rope of Allah in which Allah is giving the guidance from Holy Qur'an is that hold tight to the rope of Allah and don't separate from that rope. Why? Because the tariqahs whom they adhered to the principles of Islam and they are holding the reality of Islam. We describe the path is that the bayad is mandatory in Islam but no longer practice. So the adherence to the true path and the true way of Islam is the bayat. And why the bayat is because Allah knows that you better be holding while we begin to throw. Because as these testings come in life they begin to affect the character of people. They thought they were just going to merely cruise right into paradise. And Allah described and <laughs> give an example that Nabi Musa asked Allah that in his dialogues of thinking that he had the most knowledge and the highest stations, he went on a course of discovering Allah's creation. One of the events was with Sayyidina Khidr in which he thought he had the highest knowledge and Allah just said, no, above every knower I have another knower. And one went to go meet with Sayyidina Khidr but he had another knower. And he said that, this one I want you to meet is amazing in their worshipness. And he went into a cave and he heard a man doing zikr. And that man in the cave he's looking at him at a distance, he has no hands and he has no feet. And he sits alone in this cave and making zikr and he was making his Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, his zikr whatever that zikr was at that time in Aramaic, Arabic. He's making his zikr and as Nabi Musa is watching at a distance a lion entered into the cave and began to devour the man in a ravenous way began to devour the man and Nabi Musa was shocked and retreated and went back and asked Allah, what was that? This poor man had no feet, no hands and praising and praising and praising you, what, oh, what, what, what did I just see? He said, did you think my paradise was so cheap? Means there's a price for my paradise, it's not something cheap. 
And Mawlana Shaykh would tell us that and continuously repeat these different examples of these hidden awliya and these people of dhikrullah, the people whom Allah has an immense love upon them as a reminder that the path has testing. You don't just put it in cruise control and you sort of march into paradise and everything going to be great and everything opens for you. But it's a path in which to struggle, to fight with oneself, to take the continuous bombardment and the rule because Allah wants for these individuals because He's inspiring them hidayat and guidance. Those whom Allah guides are truly guided. Those whom are not guided by Allah can find no guidance. Ladana hadan Allah. We say every time in our Jummah but everybody thinks that's for them. But these are for tariqahs because if they're not taking the bayat and they're not holding the hand of these awliya, this level of testing is not coming to them because Allah as He's bombarding, He's in reminding you, you better hold tight to that hand. So you have one hand holding and the rest of you receiving. And you take your blows and you take your blows but it never you let go of that hand. For if you should leave that hand every type of difficulty comes to the servant in life in ways that cannot be imagined because it's not something that, that can, can be understood. Means the station in which Allah wants to dress is not that you just walk into paradise and it's finished and everything going to be great. It's a test and a continuous stages of difficulties and tests. Well, Allah describes Surah Al-Inshira which is about the opening and the heart transplant. That I'm after difficulty comes ease and then again Allah warns us, after difficulty comes ease. Not the reverse that I give you ease and then there's difficulty, I give you ease and then there's difficulty. But after difficulty comes ease means that every test that comes in life, don't worry, inshaAllah there'll be an ease but be prepared for the next round that's coming right behind it like waves. And as a result of understanding guidance means these are the beads that the shaykh keeps reminding himself and everyone else is a tasbih, all of these have to be used together. When you train in tariqahs you're doing your muraqabah to make your connection, you've taken your bayat and your allegiance. And what Allah describes for the bayat, the one who breaks it, breaks it to the detriment of his own soul. Now means his soul is in danger in the breaking of his bayat. So it means it's not something you can pick and choose and say, hasta la vista. Because now you have no hand to reach to you that gives an ease and gives a support but that doesn't mean Allah's not finished beating you. Means didn't mean just because you decide to walk away that Allah's decided not to give you a test and give you tests and raise you, it just means you distance yourself from the rahmah and the mercy that was holding you and sending a, a light to you, sending an ease to you. And that's all shaitan wanted. He knows that he is not going to take somebody away from tariqah and put them in, in a, the lap of ease. But what he wants for these tariqah people to devastate and decimate them that he's biting the hand to the shaykh. Means that he's biting your hand to release from that shaykh because he's a rahmah to you. And his, his prayers are holding back the extent of these testings that come to you. Like an umbrella of mercy from the presence of Prophet That's why you go back and read 
Surah Fatiha, 48th Surah of Qur'an which describes the bayat and the one whom they've taken their allegiance and the one whom they break their bayat, they buy, break it to the detriment of their own soul. The one who never took bayat, this is not applicable because they, they didn't achieve what Allah wanted them to achieve for their souls and they're not going to get that reward anyways. But those whom Allah wanted to give this reward, the hand of the shaykh was a mercy. So Mawlana shaykh described those whom distance themselves from awliya, they distance themselves from the rahmah of Allah So the secret is the testing won't stop on you, so you understand that? Means the testing is coming like a brimstone from heavens. And now coming more severe upon the earth for everyone. Means these like asteroids of difficulty after difficulty after difficulty is coming. There's no going to stop it. And shaitan knows that. But what he does is has an immense dislike for these people whom Allah loves. And what he wants to do with them is take the hand of the shaykh off. So his whole, his whole process is biting that grip. So in testing that comes and in every event that comes in life, it's not your cleverness that you think you're going to lift your hand from the shaykh, no. But it's that shaitan is biting your fingers to put you into an immense state of difficulty because that doesn't bring ease in your life, that doesn't lessen the testing in life because that testing is from the love of Allah He says, I love the servant, I'm going to dress them. And Allah's rahmah for them was then hold to these shaykhs, hold to these guides. And you can't take your hand and put it on another hand and put it on another hand, it's not like a bus you can take the next one. Once your hand is on that hand it is the mercy of Allah that flows through the hand because Allah's power flows through the heart of Prophet and from Prophet through these guides. It's that rahmah that gives the, the shifa. So the sickness is coming but the healing was in the bayat and that's why Allah is describing then that's why you break it to your own detriment. Means what Allah wanted the servant to achieve it requires that hand. What the servant is going to be given of testing is going to require that hand. And it's interesting that in the martial arts extreme sila. The silat in which they have very, very extreme Islamic martial arts we described before and these are also familiar with rifai tariqahs that they enter into their state of tafakkur and certain conditions are put upon them and very intense testing is put upon the student in which they're supposed to control themselves from feeling an immense amount of pain based on the testing that coming from them. And as soon as that event is finished their shaykh comes and begin to recite upon them to bring an ease and to take that state of pain away, that state of testing away. And they were very symbolic of this path and very sort of the external visual effect of, of that connection. Where Naqshbandiya it's much more subtle, means the subtle is the, the knowledge is the reality that are flowing from the heart to the heart of the servants and as a result brings a rahmah and a mercy and a firmness in their path so that they can take the testings in life, take the understandings and difficulties and when they hold tight to that then they can stay their course and continue towards their oceans of reality. But in the last days Mawlana Shaykh described that only Allah will be hidden. 
And many times we ask that, how, how can awliya be hidden when there's 124,000 at all times upon this earth? He said, because the last days the character of people becomes so bad <coughs> that awliyaullah will be hidden and that they do their service to Allah but retreat from the presence of people. That when the character of people become bad and the use of their hands, their tongue and their entire being become aggressive and bad character, <coughs> they no longer can see the presence of a wali. Means they, their faculties have been overtaken by shaitan, their eye is now blocked by shaitan so they don't see a pious person anymore. Their mouth has been overtaken by shaitan and they speak incorrectly towards pious people. Now more than ever are the fingers and hands that when you're not in a good condition never type anything to shaykhs. Your intention goes far faster than the speed of your fingers. And with your fingers and your typing you're now putting your energy into your practices and you validate that reality in which the bad character of people will block them now from that presence. And that's all, all with what we're trying to describe tonight is that this whole path is based on that hand grip. Is that how firm is your hand to their hand? With your faith, your practices, your khidmat, when you stop the khidmat a tremendous rahmah stops. If you're not finding a way to be of service, that's why the shaykhs are continuously repeating in all the talks and they give all these different ways. Look at all these charities, all these websites, all these, these uh, uh, articles, all these ways to take and share so that people can have some sort of khidmat. Go out and give food, do something in the way of Allah and in the love of Sayyidina Muhammad so that it brings a rahmah. When they do these practices it brings a mercy for them and all the shaitan wants is that hand grip. So in life if you ever think you're being clever, oh I'm <laughs> just gonna, I'm gonna take a sabbatical. No you're not being clever, if shaitan has bit your fingers and you're now releasing. As a result of releasing you don't affect the shaykh at all. So many times they said before people in their bad nafs and bad desires they say, ah I'm gonna just sort of cut my presence from the shaykh thinking the shaykh will fall because they think maybe they're very glorious and they add everything to the tariqah. But in reality the shaykh is so high up carrying people and all shaitan wants for a mountain climber because you're not anymore near the ground, you're very high up because you don't know the station of the shaykh. When you decide to cut your rope, what happens? You cut yourself, you, you're starting to cut a rope but that rope is connecting you to them. You, you don't have a, another rope in the middle of the mountain climbing, you're not going to be able to fix your line onto something else in the middle of the climbing. So that's all the shaitan wants in life is to cut the connection and cut the process. When that happens and we understand that in life then we understand all these things that are happening. Every time a test comes, every time a thought comes, every time an event comes, I feel, why do I feel something is biting my grip to my shaykh? You know, because that's all the shaitan wants is to take that hand grip off so that the student feels like, oh they're going to just cut the connection and then they go free fall all the way down the mountain and the abode of difficulties and testing. We pray that on this holy month of Qamar in which these lights 
and the immensity of these lights. And as people try to climb into these lights and, and reach to these horizons, these inner beings and inner energies and inner negativity is not at all pleased. Means things that people didn't know they have within them, you know that you find you, you come the 99% of humanity have all their horrific character, they hid it. And they come amongst people, very nice, very good, say, this is such a nice person. He gives tea and does all these nice things. But when he goes into the grave, he'll, he'll know that what he could not hide from Allah will come out in the grave and he will deal with that character in the grave because everything has to go back pure. If there's some iron and copper, Allah's burning it out. So the, the difficulty of the grave, 70,000 times more difficult. But when Allah loves the servant, He says, I want you to clean that in your living life. So as they approach these lights, approach this meditation, approach the presences of the shaykh, what happens? That which they have inside of them, knowing or not knowing what they have, it must come out. So all these characteristics begin to come out, these angers, these, these bad desires, all of the impurities are coming out. If they don't understand that and hold tight to the rope, they're not going to escape it. But they're just going to be content with that bad character and shaitan will isolate them to be with that bad character. And they think that they're going to distance themselves from the purification process. But no, there's no distancing from the purification. Once we understand the process of what shaitan's doing, the hope is that people become more aware. That is, of course I approach the light, all of the imperfections are going to begin to burn out. Characteristics within me I didn't know existed, they have to come out. I have to confront them and fight them, come against them. And as a result I have to always hold firm to the hand because that becomes like a lifeline into their presence. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with the immensity of this holy month and the immensity of these tajallis, that this is the month of the full moon lights. This is the month of guidance and immense lights that are preparing us for the arrival of Rajab, Shabban and Ramadan. We pray that Allah dress us from the immensities of these oceans of Divinely love that brings us into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad's reality and Divinely lights inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatih. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs. Our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.